If you're here for some beach metal detecting tips, you are in the right place. This is Terry Shannon and he's a big deal. There was a time that I really struggled at the beach and then I found his books. Years later, I have the number one beach metal detecting tutorial on YouTube and I am a competent beach metal detectorist. Can you get somebody to run your roof in? Um, there really is nobody else, so <laughs> we, we, we'll, we'll run with this. I was representing XP metal detectors at an event in Florida when I saw Terry's name on the list and oh my goodness, it is like meeting one of your metal detecting idols. It's exactly that. And uh, I took the chance to thank him, of course, and pick his brain. So I'm just recalling, you know, I, I've learned so much uh, from Terry. I remember in his books reading about, uh, he called them bowl shapes, and that would be the beach erosion uh, that you would see. Uh, this is an excerpt from Detecting the Treasure Coast. I believe that one of the most important skills you can develop is the ability to read the beach. This isn't hard. It just takes some common sense, driving along the beach, stopping at different beach accesses, looking for low areas, as you may see an area where the water seems to be coming in, uh, further toward the dunes. This is caused by an area of the beach being washed away, forming what I call a bowl. Uh, going down the beach and reading about, uh, you know, um, specifically going for high points of the beach and like really surveying the land and, uh, you know, finding the lowest spots. So when you meet your idols, you stumble over your words sometimes. Just to be clear with that, uh, what Terry said in his books is when he would get to the beach, he would go to the highest point so that he can survey the beach to find the lowest points. Um, that's something that resonated with me. I just, right off the top of my head, that's, you know, uh, th that's what uh, I'm remembering right now. But here I am with a legend who has been very influential to me and my detecting. And uh, he's also generous with his uh, information. He's taught us all. So, Terry, if you could, do, I would be honored if you could give us a few uh, beach detecting tips. Um, I know you've probably forgotten more than I know, so we're, we're, the floor is yours. You're, you're very kind. It, uh, we lost the picture in the front here. Is it, is it recorded? That's okay. Yep, it's still recording. Oh, okay. It, uh, no, you're very kind, and, and I have been very fortunate that I've been able to live on the Treasure Coast now since, and detect over the summer or winter months since 2005, and I've done well. I got a 1701 uh, 2 real. Wow. which was my very first coin right in front of where I camped. And I tell you, it, it was just amazing. Wow. But the, the key on the, in the Treasure Coast is erosion. You need some sand to move to get down to where the good stuff is. So the way I start my days is I go driving up and down the beach. If I'm with somebody else, they go the other way. We'll stop at all the accesses, look down the beach to see where the water's coming up on there. And when you get to that lower area, that's when you're finding this stuff. Do you use uh, technology at all with that, or you just you like to survey by eye? I'm surveying by eye. I, you know, there is a couple, um, you know, uh, webcams or beach cams or something like that, but yep. I don't even subscribe to them. I just, you know, but I'm fortunate enough. I've been down there long enough. I've written six books now, and I'm pretty well known. And a lot of people, you know, I've made friends with. If they see a lawyer, they'll call me. You know, people are out there picking sea glass. I've got several of those. And, Terry, this looks good. Terry, this looks you know, And it's greatly appreciated. Got it. So you get tipped off a little bit. That that, that makes sense. That's interesting what you say about uh, sea glass. So do you, do you see that as like a sign of erosion? Well, no, actually that's probably not because when you start getting into shells and the sea glass is coming back in. To me, that was a fascinating comment about the sea glass and getting washed back in. In other words, after a big storm and sand gets washed out, what happens when you leave something that can move alone? It flattens out. The light stuff comes back in. The storm makes a cut, but eventually gravity, it moves things back to where it was. That's a sanded beach. You know, what I'm looking for, and the best thing, you know, everybody knows about the cuts where the, where the wind comes out of the, you know, the, the northwest, you know, and it'll run along and make these cuts. But really your best would be these riptides or bolts. You know, a riptide, they warn everybody, riptides, you know, high riptide risk. I get kind of excited. These are dangerous, but they also, when they come in, and the, the current comes in and goes back out, and it washes stuff out, yep. and it'll go down to some incredible depths. 
So what you're seeing here, somebody poured some dye into the water in a spot where there is a riptide and look at the direction that it's going. And this is how people drown. They get pulled out. People, big people, 200 plus pounds getting pulled out. Think of what that does to beach sand. That's why you get those bowl shapes. That's why you get depressions or low spots in the beach. Friendly reminder, if you are enjoying this video, please hit like and hit that subscribe button. You're gonna learn a lot. And uh, Fred Banky and I got into one uh, about a month ago, and he got a ring, uh, it's from the 99.9% uh, well, 9 .9, 9 silver, and it's from, uh, uh, it goes way back, way back in the 1500s. And I'm trying to think the uh, time happened a little bit. This was amazing, so anyway. Yeah, the Knights of Malta. The Knights of Malta, we've done quite a bit of research on it. And I was just digging steady. I, mean, I bet you I took out 20 of these big bronze ship fights and stuff like that. And so we've had some really good hunts this year. So take a second and process that. I made a video a few months ago about a thousand rings are dropped and available for anybody to pick up at any given time on any high volume beach. People were like, that's ridiculous, Merrill. Now, we're talking about a ring that was pulled from the 1500s and uh, still there, just pulled. The beach hides a lot. What are some of your other things that you look for uh, to show a sign of, of a low beach? Um, is it just uh, beyond the cuts? Uh, beyond the, um, you know, the obvious erosion, is there something else that you There's look for? There's something. When I found that 1,400 coin, or 1,500, 1,544 coin, I was walking on the uh, water's edge, and as I looked towards the bank, I could see orange spots. And what they were is the ghost crabs were digging down oh, and bringing wow. up this orange sand. That orange sand is the original beach. And the minute I seen that, I went up there, and I had three days of the most phenomenal detecting you ever seen. Wow. Two Spanish coins out of there. So wow. The orange sand, when you see the orange sand, and now all the old timers tell you to look for the black sand also. When you see the black sand, that's highly mineralized. And, and, uh, but you see, the problem with the black sand is, is that there's a lot of guys out there with those huge coils, and it kind of, the black sand is mineralized, it kind of overpowers it, and they're losing their small, you know, their small targets. Now, XP has a solution for this. Now, there's magnetic accept and reject, and this is made specifically for the beach programs, it gets mixed up often. You want magnetic accept. You start to see black sand, you want magnetic accept. Believe me, I get it. Like, magnetic reject sounds logical. Like, let's reject the black sand and hear everything else. But it doesn't work like that. It's magnetic accept. Black sand, ferrite, meteorites, and good deep targets are accepted with a positive sound. I had a deal where uh, a bunch of guys found, got into an area with musket balls, and I got there late. And over a three-day period after they left, I pulled out 210 musket balls and one Spanish coin. Wait for it. And I was using the day, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a good choice. <laughs> you know, wow. I've been very happy with it. It's a late machine, you know, and I'm out there six, seven hours a day. Yeah. And, uh, and just love it. It's made to be light just for that. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a question for you. I've got a million questions for you, Terry. So you just tell me when I get annoying with the questions. Um, one of the things, uh, like when I started with beach metal detecting, I used to believe that objects would be pushed in by storms. I still do. Um, but I know that there's different characteristics of objects. Say the, a gold ring, which doesn't really have uh, the flow of, say, a coin, which is a flat surface. Let's say you get a, a heavy gold ring. How much do you think, with events like hurricanes, how much do you think that moves versus stays when it's a heavy object? It moves an awful lot. I know people, wow. if you're in an area where there's no current, it'll probably stay right where it was lost. But I got into an area uh, and I found 11, co 11 rings and one day on, on a, a bowl, one well, of wash up bowl, and five of them were gold rings. You know, and it's an area with, where there was parking for maybe three cars. There's no way all that stuff was lost there. My friend lost his wedding ring right in front of our camper when we were, you know, on the beach. And I found it three days later, about 300, miles, uh, 300 yards down the beach. Oh, my goodness. You know, so it moves. There's no question. And, you know, when you go out to these the, the beaches, everybody seems to think that you want to hit the main beaches because that's where all the people are. 
mm -hmm. you know, and I actually do much better in between the beaches. Mm -hmm. You know, I was out one day and, and well, one night, my buddy and I, we were digging, I called my wife at eight o'clock, and we normally eat at five, so I said I'm gonna be late. And she, I said, you know, what do you, and I said, I'm just finding all kinds of stuff. See, what do you find? I told her, I don't know, it's so dark, I can't tell, but I'm not leaving. The next day we come back and we found five, eight reals. You know, oh. five, eight reals, and I got the signal, I looked down, and the very nicest eight I've got was laying right on top of the ground. I just bent down and picked it up, you know. And the other four weren't nearly as nice. Those four had washed in. Mine, I believe, washed out of the dunes. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff comes out of the dunes. You know, and most of the coins that I find, I find them back up high. But I do follow, I preach about following the waves out, you know, and stuff like that. So, so it's just uh, luck. You know, that's luck. a really interesting point, too. I, I find myself gravitating to, like, the low wet. And I think a lot of other people do, too. But that's an interesting point that you made about the dunes. And uh, further back on the beach, uh, it often gets forgotten. Well, what happened when we got those five aerials, it was a full moon, new moon. And so they got the plus tides and the minus tides. That's the best tide. If you're going to travel to the treasure coast, try to do it during a major moon phase. But it, it, the tides are coming way up. And we found them. And, and I had a couple of really good days at detected. I got to thinking, after that high tide, every day it's going to recede a little bit. You know, so I've got two weeks before the new moon or the next full moon. That, and I went all along the treasure coast, way up high, and I mean it was just for now. I never found any more Spanish coins, but I found stuff every day up high. So you, you got to kind of think out of the box once a while. Yeah. So Terry has six books out now. The one that I read first that I especially love, Detecting the Treasure Coast by Terry Shannon, I'm going to link to in the video description. It is a must read for beach metal detectorists. I, I truly appreciate uh, everything that you've done, Terry. Uh, you know, again, this is somebody who has taught me uh, a great deal about metal detecting. And uh, it just so happens also, he's, I, don't, I don't know if he's ready for yeah, being on up, camera. Man. Everybody remembers going? Mr. Gold. Uh, yes, Rob's been in, I'd say, 50 to 100 of my videos. This is my buddy. He's moved down to, uh, to Florida. So happy to uh, reconnect with Mr. Gold, who's got quite the detecting reputation <laughs> yeah, as well. So. I learned a lot from you too, and this man right here. <laughs> My swing, I take from you. Um, I, early on, I would Lord watch Star. yours. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having quite the geek out moment. This is, uh, yeah. this is a great day and for I'm me. glad to meet up with you again. You know, it's been what, a couple of years probably. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. All right.